Thanks very much, Umron, as we have this opportunity to be here as a sponsor meeting. And uh, we are three people. We are going to present presentation on the issue. It's me, Kostas Priftis. I'm from Athens, Greece, from the National Kabbalistrian University of Athens. I'm going to present what is a wheezing and why it is important to confirm it is wheezing. Professor Bulen Karadas uh, from the University of Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, he's going to present the struggle of pediatricians and parents with a wheezing child. And uh, the third, finally, Professor Wim van Alderen presenting on introducing uh, WizCan, a new tool to help parents confirm wheezing. I'm going to present uh, what is a Wiz and why it is important to confirm it is a wheezing sound. Noisy breathing is very well known clinical sign. All clinical clinicians uh, we are using it, especially pediatricians, doctors involved with children have uh, very uh, high in the way of uh, seeing people, examining people, getting history, learning very many details as they can about noisy breathing. It starts from the very early ages. Hippocrates used it. But centuries later, René Lenec, he used it. Uh, and uh, we can see this picture as he was using ascultation, having this ear on the chest of the ill people. That's why he invented uh, the stethoscope. It is now 200 years from that period. Stethoscope still is the tool doctors use to listen to the chest, to check breath sounds. Breath sounds could be also through the mouth and we could detect with naked ear. Breath sounds is, as I said, the main tool we get from the history as a symptom. So it is not easy and we pay very much attention on that information. Lenek, from the beginning, in 1819, that it is much more difficult to describe than to distinguish uh, breath sounds. It is uh, really, we all clinicians, we could confirm uh, how true was the notice Lenek wrote this time. So in my presentation, I'm going to say about breath sounds classification and then the clinical importance on the breath sounds detecting. Six years ago, it was published a very essential paper from New England Journal of Medicine uh, on the fundamentals of lung auscultation. It was written uh, by Bohadana Izbeki and Steve Kramen. So they had essentially divided as normal respiratory sounds and abnormal respiratory sounds, very reasonable. In normal, we have a trachea sound, lung or vesicular sounds, and bronchial breathing. As abnormal, we have uh, two groups, musical sounds and non-musical sounds, and a mixed, the one which is squawk. Stridor, whiz, and ronchus are musical. Fine crackle, coarse crackles, and plural friction rub are non-musical. Our whiz is in the group of musical respiratory sounds. Two years later, it was another paper that came up. It was by task force uh, of ERS as the report of this task force. First author was past Hans Pasterkamp, well, very well known. And uh, essentially, uh, we followed 
the line very close to Bohadana paper. Uh, we have normal or basic sounds and adventitious sounds. It is lung sounds when we detect them from the chest or respiratory sounds anywhere detected from uh, the mouth or the neck or from any way or through the naked ear. And we have rub, grunting, snoring, cough, all these no, all these sounds. And again, we have uh, the classification as discontinuous and continuous. In other words, uh, non-musical and musical. Here we have uh, the musical breath sounds, high pitched and low pitched, high pitched as wheezes and low pitched as bronchus, as ronchi. Whiz, as we said, it is a high pitched heard with or without stethoscope, especially during expiration. It is produced by obstruction of airflow within intrathoracic airways. We can in this way detect asthma as an asthma sign or can be produced by bronchiolitis or by malaysia or by a foreign body. For so different entities producing in a different way but pathophysiologically uh, with the same way, with bronchus. Bronchus is another type of musical continuous breath sound. We have two types of bronchus, sowing produced by different pathology. We have low pitched wheeze, which comes from airway wall flutter or snoring character uh, through secretions, as we can see here. Uh, the point is that bronchus, it is a sound uh, which is difficult to be recognized uh, if it is from airway wall flutter or through air through secretions, coming through secretions. So although there are two different pathologies, they produce the same sign. And what is the clinical importance uh, of detecting correctly the breath sounds, especially wheezing? Yes, it is. And we can see uh, through this paper, the adventure, I could say, of lung sounds, breath sounds. There were 12 experts, underline please, experts, and two recorded sounds. We had uh, the possibility to divide them, to nominate them as one of them according to these prototypes. It was uh, a mess. The experts couldn't find uh, any agreement. The agreement was very poor, classifying the recorded sounds, okay? Then we try to have uh, less, four prototypes, and we could give the name to any of the recorded sound. Uh, well, it was fair to good, but we said finally, okay, tell me, it is crackle always, and we all had an excellent agreement. It seems that the essence uh, of our clinical point is to confirm if it is a breath sound, crackle or whiz. So in our case, it is quite important to be sure that it is whiz or not whiz. Uh, and we come back to the one stated decades ago in a paper in JAMA, saying again, classifying them as discontinuous and continuous, having these two types of breath sounds and especially continuous considered as wheezing breath sounds. To be honest, in uh, the way the task force tried to classify, to nominate breath sounds, had 
representatives of each language. Uh, it was again a mess uh, because from the same country, we have different names from the same sound. So if doctors, these were all doctors, have uh, really difficulty to give a name, uh, to recognize the sounds, we can understand how important it is to get the correct recognition, being as simple as we can with doctors and patients or parents also. The, theme, the take home messages of this short presentation are the following then. 200 years after stethoscope usage, still more difficult to describe than to distinguish breath sounds, as Lenek said. Crackles and wheeze really are well recognized. Enough is enough, no more. The usage of terms varies widely using different terms, the same sound. An objective recognition and description would be ideal. We need the objective recognition and description then. The final assessment is a synthetic clinical procedure as we showed, we had seen that WIS can be produced by different clinical entities. That's it, the end of my presentation and uh, my close friend Bulent Karadas is going to present his own presentation. Thank you.